So this video is going to cover adding and subtracting radicals. So the main thing that we need to remember when it comes to doing this is very similar to adding and subtracting fractions. We cannot add or subtract fractions unless they have a common denominator. Well, we can't add or subtract radicals unless they have a common radical. So here to get us started, I have an example that already has the same radical. So taking a look at our two terms, we're adding 3 square roots of 6 plus 5 square roots of 6. And before we actually get into adding this, I actually want to mirror this example right here. Think back to combining like terms, right? So when combining like terms, Hopefully we do know that in order to combine like terms, well first off they have to be like terms, they have to be the exact same variable, an x is the same as an x, and then all we do is we add our coefficients, so 2 plus the 5 gives us a 7x, we keep the variable. So we add our numbers, we keep the variable. So that same exact thing is mirrored with adding and subtracting radicals. As long as we have the same radical, we add the numbers, 3 plus the 5 gives us 8, and kind of treat that square root of 6 like our x over here. Square root of 6, we just drop that down. 3 square roots of 6 plus 5 of them gives us 8 square roots of 6. So that would give us our final answer. Okay, so our next example here, we have square root of 7 minus 6 square root of 7. So we're subtracting these two together. So again, first we need to make sure that we do have the same radical in the terms that we are adding or subtracting. And we do have the same radicals here. Square root of 7 is the same as the square root of 7. So that means we subtract our numbers. Okay, so we're subtracting our numbers in front. So similar if I just had an x all by its lonesome, we, or it's understood that there's a 1 in front of it, same thing here. It's kind of understood that there's a 1 in front of this radical here. So when we're subtracting, we're subtracting 1 minus 6. So remember your integer rules, 1 minus 6. If you have $1 in your bank account and you, subtract, or you spend 6 bucks, hey, you're down 5 now, so you're negative 5. Otherwise, just drop down that square root of 7 along with it. So our solution here would be negative 5 square roots of 7. Okay, so our next example here, square root of 45 plus 4 square roots of 20. So here we're given an example to where our radicals are not the same. Okay, so if they're not the same, what we need to do then is we need to see if we can simplify them to make them the same. Remember, remember when it comes to simplifying radicals, we need to factor what we have in the hopes of factoring out a perfect square. So what are our perfect squares? So taking a look at our list then, again, remember you want to start from the bottom up. So let's start with 45. So the first perfect square that we have that is smaller than a 45 is 36. So it's 45, 36 times something, 25 times something, 16 times something, 9 times something. Hopefully that one is ringing a bell. 45 does happen to be 9 times 5. And remember, we need to use one of our perfect squares in order to break it up. Okay, so let's continue working with this one here before we move on to our second term that we have. So once we break it apart, take the square root of what you can. The square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 5, we can't break that apart. It's a prime number, so we just drop that down. So then our hope kind of is here that once we simplify down the second term, that it'll end up being a square root of 5 so that we can then add these together. So let's see. Looking at the square root of 20, the 4 in front for right now, we're not going to do anything with it. So let's see, I'm just going to drop these plus signs down for now. Um, that 4, let's keep that there in front. We need to work with simplifying what's underneath the radical. So we have a 20 there. So again, looking at our list, starting with the 16, is 16 20 times, or is 20 16 times something? Is it 9 times something? 4 times something? That's the one that happens to work here. 20 is 4 times 5. So we need to break up 20 to a square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Now also do remember up here, so this is 4 times the square root of 20. So when we broke this down, this is 4 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And that's important to remember that this is getting multiplied together. Because here in our next step, 
we need to simplify what we can. Well, that 4 can't be simplified still. Let's drop that down. Square root of 4? Hey, well, the squ square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 cannot be simplified, so we drop that down. We do have one more step of simplifying for this problem, though, here, because we have this 4 times 2 in front that we need to take care of. 4 times 2 is an 8. So we multiply those numbers together, go ahead and drop down that square root of 5 still. And let's go ahead and drop down the rest of the problem here. We have the 3 square roots of 5 plus 8 square roots of 5 now. And now that we have the same uh, things underneath our radical symbol, we can now combine these together by adding our coefficients. 3 plus 8 is an 11 square root of 5. So we have 11 square root of 5 as our solution here. Okay, so another example here. So here we obviously have different radicals. So here we're given the square root of 32 underneath that one. And then we have the square root of 98. We do have numbers in front of the, both of these, so do be aware this is negative 5 times the square root of 32 plus 2 times the square root of 98. Now we can't add or subtract or do anything to this example first until we have the same thing underneath our square root symbol. So the first thing that we need to focus on is simplifying these. So first off, I'm just going to drop down that negative 5 down in front and I'm going to work with simplifying the square root of 32. So again, simplifying, we need to take a look at our list of perfect squares and think how can we break up 32. Is 32 25 times something? Is it 16 times something? All right, and go down the list and think about that. Now also remember we want to start with our bigger numbers and work our way on up to the smaller numbers. The bigger numbers are going to get us to our final solution quicker. If the smaller numbers is what we see first and go with, we may just have another simplifying step to do. But it is always bigger. It is always better to start with the bigger number. Now 32 happens to be 16 times 2, so that's how I'm going to break it up. And again, remember the product rule is what allows us to break it up this way. So once again, let's drop down the negative 5. We're not dealing with that quite yet. We want to continue to simplify what we have. We have the square root of 16, which is a perfect square. We get a 4. Square root of 2 cannot be simplified, so we just drop that down. Since we took the square root of 16 and got a 4, we now, are, we now have a number there, which means that negative 5 that's hanging out, we can finally have that multiplied. So we had a negative 5. We're now multiplying it times the 4. So negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. And again, just drop, that, that, drop down the square root of 2 along with it. I'm also going to drop down these plus signs here. And we're going to work on simplifying our next term. So there we have two square roots of 98. So I'm going to drop down the 2, and I'm going to deal with 98 first. So looking at our list, right, we need to start with 81 and work our way on up. Right? Is it 81? Is it 64? Is it 49? And keep thinking and racking our brains. Now, we do need to be a little bit skilled in our multiplication skills here. If you're not quite there, maybe try using the calculator and use your calculator and go through that list. You know, does 98, is it divisible by 81? Is it divisible by 64? By 49? And keep dividing it to see which one's going to give you a whole number. Now, 98 actually happens to be 49 times 2. So that's how I'm going to split it up. So again, let's simplify what we can. So that 2 is just going to get dropped down. The square root of 49 is a 7. And that square root of 2, just drop it down. Multiply those numbers in front. We can multiply 2 times a 7. That is a 14. And drop down the 2 behind it. Now that we have the same thing underneath our radical symbol, we can now combine these by adding our coefficients together. So negative 20 plus 14. Remember, if you're negative 20 in your bank account and you only have $14 to add to it, you're still negative, but at least you're only down 6. And then attach that square root of 2 along with it. So our final solution here is a negative 6 square root of 2. Okay, so the last example here is 
a kind of a three-part example here, right? We have three terms that we're going to subtract together. So 2 square root of 8 minus 5 square root of 32 minus 2 square roots of 48. So same rule applies. We cannot add or subtract it unless we have common radicals. So none of these radicals are the same, right? 8 is not the same thing as the 32, is not the same thing as a 48. So we have some simplifying that we need to do. So let's start with 2 square roots of 8. So let's drop the 2 down and look at the square root of 8. And taking a look at all of our perfect squares, how can we break down the square root of 8? 8 happens to be 4 times 2. So I'm going to break this up, square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Continue to simplify what you can, so the square root of 4 is a 2. That 2 in front and the square root of 2, just drop that down. We have 2 times 2, which is a 4. Drop down that square root of 2 behind it. I'm going to go ahead and drop down these minus signs while we work on the middle one. So there we have 5 square root of 32. So I'm going to start with dropping down the 5. We're not going to mess with that yet. And look at square root of 32. Looking at square root of 32 and, and looking at our list, starting with the 25, 25 doesn't work. Then we look at 16, and 32 actually happens to be 16 times 2. So that's how I'm going to break it apart. Take the square root of 16, that gives us a 4. Drop down that 5 in front and the 2 behind it. Multiply the numbers in front together. 5 times 4 is 20. Drop down that square root of 2 with it. Then we have minus signs behind that. And let's simplify the next one. We have two square roots of 48. I'm going to drop down the two first. Looking at square root of 48, okay, so 48 is not 36 times something, not 25 times something, but 48 does happen to be 16 times 3. Okay, so we have the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. We can take the square root of 16, that's a 4. Drop down that 2 in front, square root of 3 behind it. Multiply that 2 times that 4 to get an 8, and drop down the square root of 3 behind it. So we're done simplifying. Okay, now it's time to subtract. Now, also remember, we can only subtract like radicals. So the like radicals that we have are these square root of 2's. This square root of 3 hanging out back here, it has no other square root of 3 anywhere in our expression, so we cannot add or subtract it. So that one is going to actually just end up coming down. The only thing that we can combine are these first two ones. So 4 square roots of 2 minus 20 square roots of 2, subtract the numbers, 4 minus 20. Well, if you have $4 in your bank account and you spend 20, you are now negative 16. Attach that square root of 2 along with it. So here, our final solution is negative 16 square root of 2 minus 8 square root of 3.